argument that we have learned how to do so far. Where is my mouse? There is my mouse. We start with play. Come on, fill in the blank. Y'all can answer these. You then go to evidence. Perfect. We end with commentary. But so far, the only kind of commentary we've learned is contrast. We are going to take the exact same claim and evidence. We are going to pop the commentary off, and we are going to learn a new form of commentary. And this is going to be comparison commentary. Comparison commentary is where, again, it's a logic game. But you are trying to reach into your audience's brain and figure out what would your audience understand? What would your audience connect to or relate to? And then you try and compare it to what you're saying so that they understand your point of view. I want you to imagine that we have, guys, focus. We have found an alien planet. And there are new alien life forms on it. And I would like to describe them to you, but you're not scientists. And so you don't have the scientific knowledge necessary for me to explain it in highly technical terms. Well, I could break out a comparison, an analogy, and I could say something like, this new alien has an elephant's trunk. Does that create a clear picture in your head? It's an elephant's trunk, not as thick, but it looks like an elephant's trunk, and it has the neck of a giraffe. Do you have a clear image in your head about what the alien looks like? Yeah, you're starting to get one. Has a very small head with a large round body that looks like a beach ball. I see you smiling because you now have a visual image in your head. I have not given you any scientific terms. Instead, I compared it to things. The power of comparison commentary is if you compare it to something that the audience already knows, the audience goes, oh, and they suddenly get it. But because comparison commentary is you trying to connect with what your audience already knows, Comparison commentary is both the most powerful and the most dangerous of the comparisons or the commentaries. And I see this all the time on Twitter. I'm going to pick on vegans for a minute. If you're vegan, sorry. But I see a lot of them use comparison commentary really badly. They'll say things like, Eating that hamburger is just like killing a child. Those are lies. Now, how does the, I see some of you smiling. How does the audience immediately react to that? They, yeah, you're like, it's ridiculous. It's silly. And here's why. In your mind, is a cow life and a human life, a child's life, are they the same? Are they the same in the vegan's mind? So what they're doing is instead of trying to reach for a commentary in their reader, in their listeners' minds, their audience's minds, instead they're using a comparison that works in their minds. And they're making something that makes sense to them. You eating a hamburger is just like killing a child. You're a mass murderer for eating that meat. To them that makes sense because the comparison of animal life to human life, that is true in their brain. But because they're using a comparison that is not true in the audience, the audience's reaction is, oh, you vegans, you so silly, you so stupid. And what that points out is that when you're doing a comparison analogy, you have to be very, very careful that you compare it to something that your audience will get. You have to be very, very careful that you are not simply talking to yourself. 
you already believe the thing that you're trying to argue. Your goal is to convince other people. And I will tell you in this day and age, it is harder and harder and harder because of what are called echo chambers. Echo chambers are where you find a social group where you only talk to people that already agree with you. And the more you talk to people that already agree with you, the more you all say the same thing, you echo each other, and then you start thinking your thoughts are normal. And then you leave the echo chamber and you're shocked when you can't communicate, convince, persuade anyone else. So, and I, I pick on vegans just because I do see the argument about meat and murder a lot because they don't understand it's not connecting with non-vegans. And what happens is they are online in vegan communities. They are in TikTok on vegan TikToks. They spend all of their time with other vegans. And so when they make that argument, the reaction they get back is, yeah, yeah, yes. And then they leave their community and use the argument. And they literally don't understand why people are like, uh, wow, you're funny. Let me film this because you're being ridiculous. You have to be very, very careful. If you are ever to a point in your life that you never hear dissenting arguments and you never hear anyone disagree with you, that means you are in an echo chamber and that's probably not a good place to be. You need to go out and hear other points of view. But that's particularly important for comparison commentary because you have to find a comparison that works for the audience, not for yourself. So, we have Circe, who is giving Odysseus information that is helping him be successful later in life. Give me a situation that high school students would relate to, because that's who your audience is, where someone gives information to try and help someone be successful in the future. Teacher, how does a teacher... How is a teacher like Circe? Because they gave, they gave you helpful information to help, like, help your situation. Okay, so they give helpful information to try to improve the situation. So when we did contrast commentary, it always kind of started with if, if it were different. <coughs> Comparison can start a lot of different ways. So you can start similar to or like. And as long as you're using a transition where you make it clear that you are comparing things, you're not saying she is a teacher, you can really start comparison commentary any way you want. So Circe here is acting like a teacher who wants to provide information to help her students be successful in the future. Teachers are generally helping students on the path to career success. But Circe is helping Odysseus learn how to Make amends. Good phrasing. But both. Yeah, I can actually just leave it there. So, Circe here is acting like a teacher who wants to provide information to help her student be successful in the future. Teachers are generally helping students on the path to career success, but Circe is helping Odysseus learn how to make amends with Poseidon. Does that show how they are similar? If someone had never read the Odyssey and they read that commentary, would they have a little light bulb went off when they went, oh, got it. 
then that's good comparison commentary. Good comparison commentary is trying to get your reader to understand something new by comparing to what they already know. It's very easy to do comparison commentary. It's very hard to do good comparison commentary because you do have to make sure that you are keeping that reader in mind. If you miss, you end up being the vegan, yelling at people who are eating a hamburger that, that they're serial killers, and then you'll end up on TikTok and not on your own TikTok for a good reason. Yeah. Questions on comparison commentary. So here's your homework, and I actually hope that you can get this done before you leave today. I want you to write me an argument about Odysseus. You can pick any claim you want, but I want claim evidence. But this time in your commentary, you must use. I'm not sure I understand. Stop it, Apple Watch. This time you must use comparison commentary. So let's practice making those comparisons to make your logic clear. Got it? Go. Let's get the homework done.